Almost seven years ago, Sandra Gant disappeared in Clacton. Essex Police launched a murder inquiry, but her family have no idea what's happened to her. Well, tonight, two of her daughters are appearing in a documentary to appeal for any information about what's happened to their missing mum. Tom Barton has this report. Returning to the place where their mum was last seen is always painful for Lauren Chesley and her sister Michaela. It's seven years since Sandra Gant was last seen visiting a soup kitchen at this car park in Clacton. Police launched a murder inquiry and arrests were made, but no one has ever been charged and her body has never been found. It's easier if someone dies. I know obviously it's sad, but if you know they're dead and you buried them, you can grieve. But when you don't know where they are or if they are alive or dead, then you don't know how you're meant to feel or what you're meant to... The emotions are all over the place. Now two of Sandra's daughters have taken part in a documentary to be broadcast tonight with Lorraine Kelly called Missing Mums. It's hard that every day goes by and every year goes by and another year and another year and it's really hard to sort of think that you may never have an answer. You may never know. It's part of the sisters' ongoing efforts to find out what happened to their mum. We're living in hell because our mum's missing and it might have been through someone's fault so we just want to know really either way whether she is still alive or not and we're just hoping that someone can help us and give us some information. Sandra's daughters have lived for seven years without any clues about what happened to her. They hope that someone will eventually come forward with information that will give them the answers they desperately need. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Clacton. An Essex MP has sold his second home and donated £60,000 from the sale to charity. John Barham was re-elected as the Conservative MP for Basildon and Billericay last month. He bought a second home in Billericay ten years ago and has claimed expenses on the mortgage repayment since he was elected in 2001. He now lives solely at the family home in London and rents an office in his constituency. Now farmers are calling for a stronger commitment to sea defences along the North Norfolk coast. A new report by the National Farmers Union says farming is central to the environment and the local economy, but it's worried that land could be given up to the sea. Tony Mercer reports. The beauty of the broads attract thousands of visitors every year, but despite appearances, this is a largely man-made landscape. The broads themselves were dug out for peat, and over the centuries, the countryside's been shaped by drainage and farming. Today's report from the National Farmers Union says that should continue. Richard Hurst's family has farmed on the broads for generations. We want to ensure that uh, sea defences are absolutely vitally important and that those defences are maintained. They've been there for hundreds of years. Let's keep them where they are. If we get an ingression of salt water into some of the broads areas, we lose the lot. We lose it from a farming point of view, from an environmental point of view, and importantly from a tourist point of view and all the jobs that go with it. Last year, Natural England said one option for the future was to allow the sea to flood part of the broads between Eccles and Winterton. It will only commit to supporting existing sea defences for another 50 years. In a statement, it says Natural England recognises the importance of inland and coastal defence to this area, and supports the policy of holding the current coastal frontage that protects the broads and all its assets for at least the next 50 years. Farmers, though, are looking beyond the next half century. They say long-term investment in sea defences is vital to protect farming and the benefits that come with it. Tiny Mercer, Anglia News, Ormsby St Margaret in Norfolk. A five-foot-tall flightless bird is on the run in Suffolk after apparently escaping from an estate. The rhea, a native of South America, has been spotted near Woodbridge and is reported to have survived in the wild for months. The RSPCA and police are aware, but residents say they're worried it'll cause an accident if it's not caught. Wetland plants grown in Norfolk are being replanted at the Olympic Park in London. 300,000 of them in all have been growing in special waterbeds near Thetford. That's been for the past few months. The process of transporting them all down to London began today. They'll be laid on riverbanks on the Olympic site to create new reed beds. It's all part of the largest new urban park in the country for a century.
The Roman Catholic Cathedral in Norwich begins celebrating its centenary today with a flower festival. 180 volunteers from across East Anglia have been working on dozens of floral displays for St John's Cathedral. There's also an exhibition of wedding dresses and priests' vestments from the last 100 years. I know nothing about flowers, but I know enough to be able to admire the artistry and the hard work. Uh, that goes into to these displays and they really make this building come alive. Now two of South End United's high profile players are leaving as the cash strap club bids to trim their wage bill ahead of the new season. Skipper Adam Barrett who submitted a written transfer request and midfielder Alan McCormack have both had their contracts cancelled by mutual consent, consent. The pair were among the club's highest earners. South End were relegated to League Two and avoided being wound up at the High Court. That was over a £400,000 tax bill last season. Now the Fonz himself, Henry Winkler, tells...